Morning, Trainiacs. It is as cold as I say it is in Winnipeg out there today. Minus 50. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to put out some watts in here and warm it up in the cavern. Right after we do that, we're going to talk about these. These are the Hoka One One Bondi Sixes. I don't like them. Quiet, try and make a video. A 50 minute ride with a ton of low cadence strength work, building up to a peak effort explosion from that low strength work, really access a lot of muscle fibers. It ain't long, but it's hard. Go check that out on Instagram. I'll post a video with like the whole rundown of the workout. All right. I'm gonna go inside, clean myself up, cover those so I don't get banned. And then we'll talk about the Hoka One One Bondi Sixes. They're good. And it's still cold outside, but I have yet to do a strength workout here in the last couple of weeks with all the travel. Let's talk about the Hoka One One Bondi 6. So I've been pretty skeptical about this since forever. This was the shoe that put Hoka on the map as the maximally cushioned shoe out there. Let me give you some of the stats. The game-changing Bondi family's new offering is the most cushioned shoe in Hoka One One's road shoe lineup. We've further enhanced the smooth, balanced ride delivered by the full EVA midsole, the comfortable and breathable upper, and our Meta Rocker technology. This delivers a consistent ride for all distances. The Bondi 6 will take you far and wide in comfort. That just came out. I don't know where that happened. <laughs> so, the Bondi 6, this is a road shoe. It's like your road training shoe. It isn't necessarily built for racing, but I'll get into that. It has a four millimeter heel to toe drop and it weighs 10.9 ounces. It doesn't feel like it weighs 10.9 ounces. Typically that's a shoe that I wouldn't really be very interested in whatsoever. And that's why I didn't even try the Bondi 6 because I like to race and train in something that's more like seven to nine ounces because I've always felt that once you go over 10 ounces, it's felt very cloppy, like like really a lot of smacking on the ground. But for one reason or another, I didn't really feel that with the Bondi's. I have tried, I think three series of the Clifton's. So the Clifton's I have always said are really good meat and potatoes road training shoe that you could race in. These are basically similar. Now, while they're a little bit heavier, it's got very much the same properties as the Clifton's. It has that nice responsive foam on the bottom. So it takes a lot of the load off of your joints. It is very easy on your body. So you don't feel too beat up after using this shoe. You've got decent grip on the ground because you've got the EVA mid foam on the sole while you've got the rubber on the outsole so you've got decent grip and you don't just burn through these shoes really quickly. But the upper on these isn't quite as breathable. The tongue is a little bit thicker, but overall I liked them. And one of the reasons that I tend to stay away from those heavier shoes is because I find that while they are extremely good at those meat and potatoes, longer, slower, steadier runs, they're not very good at all on speed work. However, in these shoes, 
I actually did a progression run that was 15K where the last 4K was all out, whatever I had left. And I actually got these down to a 343 per kilometer. I did another run where I was trying to hold about a four minute to 410 per kilometer pace. So we're talking somewhere in the 630-ish mile, close to a six minute mile. And I was able to do it. Now the things that I noticed with this when you started getting up to that speed is number one, it was hard to get that turnover, that cadence like really, really quick. You had to really work on your body to be able to do it. And then second, when I started taking curves at that higher speed, because the stack height's a little bit higher, because you don't have quite the ground feel with these shoes, kind of felt like I might tip over or like catch the edge of a shoe. So sure, very good shoe, but for the speed work, it's not ideal. Also, because it's not so breathable, I don't know if I would be wearing this barefoot because your feet are going to sweat, although it does have the heel cup. So if you wear these in a triathlon, like a Ironman, makes perfect sense. Half Ironman even makes perfect sense. I definitely put some socks on because while it is fairly smooth underneath, I didn't have really any sort of blisters besides just maybe just a little bit of pinching, like a tiny, tiny little bit of pinching here, just in between the toes and the ball of the foot. I didn't get any hot spots, but it's not something that I would chance because your feet aren't going to be able to breathe. So if you're using these for a longer race, half Ironman or an Ironman, throw on some socks and you're gonna have the nice ability to put that shoe on really quickly because you got the heel loop. Last little nitpicky thing, the laces are really long, like really long. Look at that, that's a lot of lace left over, but they didn't come undone once. And that is mad props for me because I'm lazy with tying up my shoes. So they tend to get untied a fair bit. So bottom line, I like these shoes, but let's put it into context of this new product rating system that I've got where one is, if you wanna try it, knock yourself out. Five is every single person should have this product. I'd probably put this at a four because I would say that everyone needs a day-to-day -day training shoe. And what I mean by that is you need a shoe that provides enough cushion that you can go out and do your long runs, you can do your slower runs and not have your body just beat to hell. This means not racing flats. This means not really aggressive track spikes. This shoe is great for that. You can do your speed work, you can do your long runs, you can probably even do a little bit of trail running on this because the bottom does have that nice rubber outsole. Why I'm not giving it a five though, is because if you are the person that wants two different pairs of shoes, like me, sometimes three different pairs of shoes, one that is more aggressive and faster, and one that is easier on your body, in that case, this one might be the one that's easier on your body, but if you are that person that wants a more aggressive shoe, this might also be just a little bit too much for you. So while I think that this is a phenomenal shoe, there is probably nothing about this that I could say could be really improved. It's just that those fives, I'm gonna be a little bit stingy with because those are reserved for the products that are like, absolutely stop what you're doing right now, go out and buy it. And I don't quite think that this is there just based on the type of shoe that it is. That's all, still good. Go check it out, 150 bucks. Like as far as Hoka's go, which last hundreds and hundreds of miles, you're getting a hell of a shoe and a really good dollar per mile on your shoe. So if you are somebody that is injury prone, that tends to get sore after runs, that's a lot of us, get yourself a shoe like this that has more cushioning. All right, let's do a strength workout and end with a little montage of me in my strength workout mantis. <laughs>